Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Uh, usually here in Manitoba, producers often will target uh, canola stubble, and often that's just because uh, availability. Uh, canola will come off earlier than most other crops in terms of, um, I guess, availability, so usually they'll want to uh, target uh, canola stubble. And a lot of the times, uh, the canola stubble, there's usually enough stalks, uh, it's tall enough for that uh, snow trapping potential that producers are looking for in order to protect their winter wheat crop over the winter. Good. Um, now, if is there a good second and third choice? Uh, um, often, um, often, like I said here in Manitoba, it's often canola is the first choice. Um, but if you can say look at another type of say cereal stubble, um, preferably you know say something like barley that also comes off relatively early. Um, oats. Um, we try to stay away from spring wheat um, just in terms of uh, rotational issues that can come with that. Uh, specifically looking at like disease issues that type of thing. So usually canola is first. Um, oat barley um, if you want to try to stay away from spring wheat but we do know that guys with limitations will go into kind of whatever there is available right um, for there are some areas certainly uh, that maybe didn't get seeded this year in Saskatchewan mm -hmm. uh, so farmers going into summer fallow or chem fallow mm -hmm. You know, not ideal, but what are you looking for as far as height or number of stalks that might kind of make up for real stubble? Yeah, um, we definitely faced that situation here last year in Manitoba. I mean, with the excess moisture we had, we had, you know, close to 3 million acres that went unseeded. So uh, we've seen a definitely increase in winter wheat that was seeded this year. Um, and a lot of that was into, I guess, what you'd call less than ideal stubble conditions. Um, kind of what we were recommending is uh, always look at kind of what's called your stubble um, snow trapping potential or STP. Um, so either you're looking for uh, a larger number of shorter stalks or a smaller number of taller stalks. Um, so there's a nice table that kind of illustrates kind of what the numbers you need in terms of kind of what your snow trapping potential is for, for what you're looking for. You know this would probably fall into that taller stubble range where you would need less of these in a field um, in order to catch that amount of snow that uh, you need the crop to kind of survive that winter. We are, we're here the first week of September. Yeah. It's been really dry here in Manitoba. Uh, we're near Carmen, so it's quite sandy. How far down is far enough? Usually we recommend no deeper than one inch. Um, I know in drier conditions, usually that's, there's often that temptation to try to seed into moisture to chase it. Uh, but for winter wheat, it's ex extremely important to not seed any deeper than that one inch. And really it's not, I guess necessarily uncommon to be seeding into dry conditions. Usually you're seeding into stubble where that previous crop is, you know, usually sucked up a lot of that moisture already. So it's not uncommon to be seeding into dry conditions. So as, as much as you kind of want to maybe try to hit that moisture, no deeper than an inch. Um, winter wheat has, you know, exhibits very little dormancy. So it actually needs very little uh, precipitation in order for that uh, seed to, to germinate. So I think there's been studies that have shown it needs just, you know, a third of an inch to kind of germinate and get going and to establish a stand. So, you know, not that much. Chances are we'll probably, you know, get that precipitation, you know, between now and freeze up. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and yeah, it doesn't really have a dormancy. So if you harvested, you know, last month, yeah. you can see that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There's so, no there's no concerns there or whatever. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. yeah. Seed that was harvested three weeks ago, there's no concerns about putting it into the ground right now type of thing. Yeah. How right. important is, is weed control ahead of the crop? It's, it's, it's important, uh, much like you've talked about, you know, importance in the spring wheat, you know, spring crops. It's important in winter wheat as well. Um, you want to get that crop established, so you want to kind of remove any of that competition that you're seeing, either from a volunteer crop that's coming up or weed issues, such as say you've got some perennial weed issues that you want to get under control as well for the, pre for the next year. This is the time to kind of be able to do it. It's also important um, in terms of uh, disease management, specifically wheat streak mosaic. Um, the, the mite... Uh, 
the wheat curl mite that uh, is kind of the vector for the virus, it likes to survive on any kind of grassy host. So see if, you know, if you're not seeding into canola stubble or if you're seeding into say a cereal stubble where there's volunteers, it's important to control those volunteers um, because the wheat curl mite actually needs living material in order to survive. Um, it can't survive any longer than 10 days with no green materials. So that's why it's important to kind of break that life cycle of that, of that uh, wheat curl mite control any of the grassy hosts that you do have in a field, uh, wait for a couple of days for that dry down to occur, and then seed your winter wheat crop into that in terms of to try to mitigate that uh, wheat streak mosaic. Mm -hmm.